Can you imagine a place which would supply you with thousands of video tutorials for free with source and downloads? Well, I can, and that place is Helping Develop, and Helping Develop is bringing out new video contents every week, so stay tuned and subscribe. Hello and welcome to the first part of the Creating a jQuery Looping Slider series brought to you by Helping Develop. I'm Joe Smith and in today, part one, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over the HTML and CSS of this slider. Okay, so the first thing we're going to have to note is that I've already created the folder named Slider on my desktop and it's got a folder within that named Image. Now this holds all the images that I'm going to be using within this slider tutorial. And the first one is the helping develop image which will be a slider image. Now this is going to be the shadow which will be underneath the sliders. Then we've just got a sleek code network one and another image for the slider. And once you have them images set out, what we're going to do is we're going to be opening Dreamweaver CS 5.5 but bear in mind you can work in any text editor and we're going to be opening a new HTML document. Once this new HTML document is open we can edit the title of this and we're just going to call it jQuery slider. Once this is done we're going to save as and we're going to save it as index.html within our slider folder. Then within the body tags we're just going to lay out how the slider will look. So we're going to make a div and it's going to have a class of slider. Then within this div we're going to be putting the image tags for the images of the slider. So we open image tag, src and we browse and then we select the helping develop image and then we're just going to put border 0 and then we're going to give it an alt tag so it validates. Now we don't have to define the width and height as we're going to be doing that in CSS. Also, this does not necessarily mean that this will be the first image to come up on your slider and I'll explain that later on. Okay, so now I'm just going to be adding in the next two images to the slider. Okay, so now these images are done, we're just going to add another div underneath and this is going to be for the shadow. Now this shadow div is completely optional so you can miss this out if you want. But if we just go to our desktop and open up this folder and navigate it to it in the browser, you can see that it looks pretty rubbish. I mean, how's that going to slide? Well, this is where CSS comes in handy. So if we go into Dreamweaver again, we're going to go within the head of the document and we're going to open the style tag. And this style has a type of text slash CSS. We're going to close that off, go down a few lines. Okay, now once this is done, our first style is going to define the class of slider. So we do period slider, open curly brace, and then the information is going to be the width, which is going to be the same as the images, which my images has an 800 pixels width, and the height is going to be 350 pixels, which is also the same as my image. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be setting an overflow and it's going to be equal to hidden. So anything that overflows the width and height of that container will be hidden. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just set the margin to 30 pixels away from the top and auto from the rest to align it to the center. And we're going to close that off. Now the next class I'm going to create is the shadow class, which as I said is completely optional. You don't need to include it. But what I'm going to be doing for this is I'm just going to be setting the background image and it's going to be the URL to that shadow image which I had in my images folder. Okay, once this is done we're going to just set the background repeat and that's going to be equal to no repeat. Then the background position is going to be equal to top. Okay, once this is done, we're going to set the width and height to exactly the same as the image width and height, which I recorded mine as 864 pixels width by 144 pixels height. Once this is done, we can just set the margin, which is completely varied on how you've done your shadow, but for me is minus 60 pixels and auto to align it to the center. Okay, once this is done, we can now view it back into the browser and you can see that that looks a lot nicer and you can kind of see how this will work. 
as the images will be in this container div and still are, but they're just hidden as at the moment it's overflowing. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying CSS to that image. Now instead of applying a class to each image, what we're going to do is we're just going to do period slider and then we're going to define for the images inside that. Now what we're going to first do is we're going to set the width and height of them images. Now you can set this to the same as your slider if you want. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do display is none as we're going to be using jQuery to slide the images in. So we don't need to we don't need to view the images at the moment. So if we view this you can see that it's just blank. Now another optional thing which you may want to do is if you go to the desktop now uh, you can see that in my slider folder in images I've added this loader.gif image. Now if I open this with say whew, Internet Explorer, I think we're going to have to, and wait for the Internet Explorer to load of course, and well what it is, is it's basically just a loading image here, which I created for helping develop. And you can see that it's quite a nice loading image. So what we're going to do, and the reason why you may want to use this, is if your images are large and may take a while to load on your site, like these images here, then you might want to display a loading. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set the background image of that slider div to the loader.gif. And then we're going to set the background repeat to none, or no repeat, and then the background position to center, so it'll be in the center of that. Now if you view this in the browser, you can see a nice little loading image, which will display when the images are loading. Okay, and that is it for this tutorial, and this will be part one. But in part two, we're going to be going over the jQuery, and we're actually going to be making it loop and slide. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to like this video, comment below, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and goodbye.